fellow Kenyans, I want to inform you that the Ministry of Health has confirmed the first coronavirus case in Kenya. This announcement by Kenya's Minister of Health set off a series of government responses. They included social distancing, wearing of face masks, hand washing, and use of sanitizers. At the same time, the government licensed hundreds of farms to manufacture various products that would help contain the pandemic. Up to date, based on the data that we have, we have uh, uh, certified 767 farms, both large, micro, small, medium enterprises, to produce this product. Out of which, 605 are still active permits. That means they are continuing to produce. Baran Jiraini is in charge of Kenya Bureau of Standards, KEBS, a government agency responsible for promotion of standardization in industry and trade. Since 2020, KEBS has suspended numerous COVID-19 related products of a poor quality. It's illegal, according to Article 10 of the Standard Act, for you to produce substandard product or a product that is not uh, meeting the requirement. Among the substandard products in the Kenyan market have been alcohol-based hand sanitizers. In its June 2020 newsletter, KEBS warned against the use of substandard sanitizers, saying they gave consumers a false sense of protection and thus were ineffective in combating the coronavirus. In addition, the substandard sanitizers increase the risk of exposure to other disease-causing pathogens. The alcohol content, you know, is a bit more expensive, so people would try to reduce the amount of alcohol content and probably uh, that, that, that is how they end up with a, a substandard product. But this is not the first time Kenya has had substandard hand sanitizers in its market. A 2015 study found that half of 14 selected hand sanitizers were substandard. The Kenya Bureau of Standards declined to give a list of substandard sanitizers currently in the market. Instead, it provided the number of farms it has banned or whose permits have expired. We have expired permits, people that may be lost interest in production and they are not producing one, one, one hundred and one farms are no longer uh, active, they are expired. 61 of the farms were banned from production out of the market surveillance activities that we did. We visited various outlets in Kenya and found some sanitizers previously suspended by KEBS on sale. KEBS explained it had lifted the suspension after the manufacturers took corrective measures. According to one study, the high demand for hand sanitizers met an unprepared manufacturing landscape and that the manufacturing opportunities were taken up by many inexperienced players. Against this backdrop, the chemistry department at the Dankemadi University of Technology in central Kenya developed a high-quality hand sanitizer that's effective in killing the coronavirus. The university is located in Nyeri, about three hours' drive from Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Dr. Paul Sang, a lecturer in the chemistry department, is responsible for marketing the sanitizers and other university products. When the WHO indicated that we needed, uh, the we needed part of combating COVID was to have uh, sanitizers, we looked around uh, looking for a product, making the product, and around that time there was a shortage of ethanol in the country. The entire country, because we know they were in a lockdown and we could not be able to import any ethanol. And so as a result we started looking locally and we found that uh, Mumia's sugar company and other sugar companies uh, produce ethanol really as a byproduct of molasses. And so we thought we could get a local solution by using their ethanol. And so in 2020, we got about 10,000 liters of ethanol from Mumia's and brought it here. Apton Ahaza is a leading technologist in the chemistry department and will show us how they make the gel sanitizer. Here we have a carboma, which is a, an emulsifying agent. We also have a aloe vera extract. We also have a, a triethyl amine, which is used together with carboma. Other ingredients that will be used include glycerin, ethanol, and water. 
so that's our water and then uh, we are going to add uh, carboma and then we are going to stir very grossly for it to dissolve in water. Apton is making 10 liters of gel hand sanitizer. He has already calculated the specific quantities of all the things he will need. So we are going to add triethylamine. We are going to take our glycerin. Finally, Apton adds the aloe vera extract to the mixture. Up to that, you have to leave it for 24 hours for it now to completely gel because the process takes a lot of time. After 24 hours, you will get the end product. Once the gel sanitizer is ready, it is packaged for sale and distribution within and outside the university. The Decoot hand sanitizer is used at all entry points to the university. Students and visitors are required to sanitize or wash their hands before being allowed in. Inside, the university has set up several hand washing points where access to sanitizers is limited. At first, some people weren't comfortable with the smell of molasses in the sanitizer. In the beginning, the molasses smell was a big issue. And of course, you know, most of the communities, especially the Protestants, uh, alcohol is really considered a problem. Rather than dilute the concentration, Dr. Sang and the team added different fragrance. So the product is now available not only in the university, although it's, we use it widely in the university, but it's also available in supermarkets such as Shen and other places where we sell our product. But it has not been easy competing with more established sanitizer brands. For instance, none of the supermarkets in Nyeri town, which is near the university, had stocked the Decoot sanitizer at the time we were there. We have been trying to penetrate neighbors. Uh, we haven't succeeded yet because most of these uh, big retail shops uh, do their sourcing centrally, and that is in Nairobi. So, and the process and the procedures to get your product there is a bit lengthy. The other reality with Kenyan retail shops is that they buy things on credit and they pay you later. So you have to be a big supplier with enough money, muzzle, to allow some millions to rest before you <laughs> It reaches you. The Decoot sanitizer is mostly sold in large quantities to institutions which buy in bulk. On a smaller scale, the sanitizer is sold at the university outlet located within the institution. A 500 mm bottle of gel sanitizer is currently retailing at 320 Kenya shillings. This price is slightly lower compared to other sanitizer brands of the same quantity in the nearby supermarkets. Dr. Paul Tanui is the head of the chemistry department. He has been instrumental in keeping his staff and students motivated, the challenges notwithstanding. You should be proud of yourself that you're part of the solution, local solutions. Of course, our product is CAB certified because we have undergone through that verification, uh, allowing us to produce this product. To verify a quality mark from the Kenya Bureau of Standards, all you need to do is to send the standard mark code to 20023. This is the sanitizer we got from the Edan Kimadi University of Technology and we are going to check whether this KEBS mark it bears is genuine or not. I'm going to send the code beneath it to 20023. KEBS has responded with details about the sanitizer. The product is instant hand sanitizer. The brand is the Coot hand sanitizer. The standard mark status says the permit is valid. Instead of sending the SMS, it's an SMS. We have a uh, CAPS app, which has a different, uh, you know, portal f functions. There's one for testing, I mean, checking the standard mark. Uh, you can check the cheese's number for a vehicle. You can check whether the CAPS, uh, you know, inspector is really a, 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 a CAPS employee. The use of substandard sanitizers may expose the consumer to bacterial and viral infections, such as influenza and colds. This and other infectious diseases can be spread from one person to another through contaminated hands. A Kenyan study conducted in three hospitals found that patients admitted to intensive care units were prone to viral infections, particularly children. This was attributed to poor hand hygiene by hospital staff when handling patients. COVID-19 may have made the hand sanitizer prominent in Kenya. 
but for Dr. Tanui and his team, its use will continue even after the pandemic, especially in hospitals and other healthcare facilities. More importantly, it will remain an integral part of our hygiene routine. The beauty about this is that it's not just about the coronavirus. There are other viruses, there are other bacteria that still needs to be eliminated. So with regard to the sanitizer, we will still continue producing it. We will still use to sanitize our hands, just like we have water points all around to still use the same for uh, trying to combat the virus.